In this episode of The Breakdown, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how I set up my lights in the studio without a light meter. Welcome back to The Breakdown. My name is Miguel Quiles, and I'm here in the studio today with Emily. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about a question that I get all the time in the comments section, which is, how did I determine what my power settings are for my light? And so what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna break down exactly how I arrive at my settings without having to use a light meter. Before we get started, let me explain to you everything that I'm using here to take these photos. So today I have the Sony a7R 3 with me. I have it paired up with their battery grip, which is super handy and super useful when you have to take portrait style photos. Uh, makes it much easier for you to hold the camera. I've got the Sony 85 millimeter 1.8. One question that I get pretty often in the comments section, people will ask, why am I using the 85 1.8 if I have the 85 G Master? And to be quite honest with you, the reason is that sometimes you get lazy in the studio, you don't wanna hold a heavier lens the whole day. Um, the 85 1.8 is much smaller, it's much lighter. Um, and usually if I'm not as tired, I can be a lot more creative. So. In professional uh, scenarios, if I'm working with a client, I would probably default to using the 8514, but in this case, I love the 1.8 because it's very sharp, it gives me very comparable results, but it's much lighter. And I'm using the Profoto Air Remote. So this is what I'm gonna be using to take all of the photos uh, for this tutorial. And let's go ahead and let's talk about the lighting and what we're using for our light shapers. Let's walk through the lighting setup that we're gonna use for today. And for all of these shots, I'm using a Profoto D2. And that Profoto D2, which is gonna be my main light, I have it set to channel A so that I'm able to control it from the remote. It's paired up with a Profoto 5 foot octa. This is probably one of my favorite light shapers, especially to use in the studio, because honestly, you can make anybody look good with a 5 foot octa. So chances are, if you see a majority of my work, uh, probably 80, 85% was lit with this size of modifier. Now, if you're watching this and you're saying, oh, you know, he's using a Profoto light, I can't afford that right now, Please understand that all of the stuff that I'm showing you right now, you could do with whatever lights it is that you choose. There's gonna be pros and cons as far as color temperature, as far as power output, all of that's gonna be different. However, you could take a speed light. In this case, if it's a five foot octa, you're probably gonna need a bunch of speed lights. You might need three or four to equal the type of output that you're getting from this strobe. Uh, the recycle time might not be as fast, but you can use whatever strobes, whatever flashes that you choose to use or whatever it is that you own. Um, just try to set up something comparable to this and you're gonna see that the results are gonna be in the same ballpark. Now for the fill light, we're actually using another Profoto D2. And then the softbox that we're using, it's actually a one by six strip bank from Profoto. And I really love using this because you actually get this like really beautiful catch light in the bottom of the eye. And with this Avenger C stand, I could position this fill light to basically either be very bright in the catch light or kind of move it down to where you don't see it impacting the photo as much. Now, the question that I'm getting all the time is with these two lights, how do I arrive at my settings if I'm not using the light meter? So now that you understand what it is that I'm using, we're gonna talk about how I dial in those settings to my own taste and how you guys are able to do it as well. Let's go ahead and figure out how we're gonna dial in this recipe, this lighting recipe. So the first thing that I always do when I'm shooting in the studio is my very first photo, I'm taking it with the strobes turned off. And what I'm attempting to do is I'm trying to take a photo in the studio where all of these lights that are in here are not impacting the exposure. So there's two ways to be able to do that. Technically there's more, there's three ways. Maybe even four, I don't know. The main ways that you're gonna be able to do this are gonna be by controlling your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, and you could also, the fourth way is by using neutral density filters to be able to control the exposure that way, but that's a little more complicated than what we're gonna talk about today. Instead, we're gonna use high-speed sync to be able to control our exposure in this room and also to be able to shoot wide open with our aperture. Now, I'm gonna shoot these photos at 3.5 for the aperture and I chose that aperture because I wanna make sure that her skin texture is nice and sharp and in detail, that her eyes are sharp and in focus, um, but then her hair and everything else basically will blend 
and just blur away into the background and that the background will have a nice blur as well. At f3.5, I'm gonna be ensured that all of that's gonna be in focus. Now, if I've dialed in that aperture, the only other things that I'm gonna be able to change is my shutter speed and my ISO. So what I'm gonna do is, using this Sony camera, it makes it kind of easy because I could see the exposure in the viewfinder. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to get the scene to be completely dark to where this light that's in the studio is not actually lighting the photo. So I'm gonna try first at, I'm gonna try a high shutter speed. We're gonna try uh, one five thousandth of a second. And I'm able to do this because the strobes have high speed sync. So this is one thing you wanna keep in mind. If you have strobes that don't have high speed sync, you're gonna be shooting at a higher aperture, maybe an F8. Um, and it'll work perfectly fine. So we're gonna try one five thousandth of a second. And the goal here is to have a photograph where you're not able to see the model at all. And I know it sounds kind of uh, counterintuitive, but what we're trying to do is basically light her with just these light shaping tools. I don't want the light from the studio. I don't want all these backlights because I can't control them. They're a different color temperature but I can control these. I can move them closer, move them away, put them to the right, to the left. I have a lot of control. So this first photograph I'm looking at and at one five thousandth of a second, you really can't see her. Uh, it doesn't look like too much ambient light is actually exposing her, but I'm gonna take a chance here. I'm just gonna go ahead and go up to one sixty-four hundredth of a second. Take another photograph here. Perfect. And I'm always shooting tethered in the studio. One of the big reasons is that it's much easier for me to evaluate these things if I see it on a big screen, as opposed to trying to look at it on the smaller monitor. At 1 hundredth of a second, F3.5, ISO 200, I have a completely dark uh, image, completely underexposed. You can't see the model at all. Once we have this baseline, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my lights. And the first thing that I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna go ahead and just try to dial in the main light and try to get that to look proper. Then I'm gonna dial in the power for this fill light. Then I'm gonna turn them both on at the same time and see how they blend together. So let's go ahead and let's get the main light dialed in. So what I've done, all I've done is just turn on this light. The bottom light is not on. So we're gonna take a test shot here. And as far as how I arrived at the settings, because this is a very common question that I get, I just dial the settings to where I think they might need to be. Over time, as you do this more and more, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get very lucky that you just turn on the lights, you dial in a power setting that you think is gonna be correct, and nine times out of 10, you're in the ballpark. So I'm taking this first photograph. It's a little bit underexposed. So what I'm gonna do is, I can look at it and tell that it's probably about two stops underexposed. So I'm just gonna go ahead on the remote, take the main light up to plus two, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take another photograph. Very good. And now the uh, main light is looking, let's wait for this to transfer. It's looking pretty good. So the main light looks fantastic and all I did was just raise it up two stops. Now, if you take this photograph and you notice that at two stops it's still underexposed, once again, dial the power up on your main light until you get the exposure correct. Now that we have the main light set up, I'm gonna turn off the main light and we're gonna turn on our fill light. And you could actually just go ahead and test, push the test button to make sure that it's going off. And so we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna check out the fill flash to make sure it's in the right position and that it has the right power. There we go. And I guess I didn't mention this earlier, but our settings in the camera are not gonna change. Once we figured out what that uh, proper setting is in the studio to negate the ambient light, we're not gonna play with our settings from that point forward. The only adjustments that we're making are to the power level of our strobes. Now the fill light in this case is very, very underexposed. It's not doing very much. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to raise that two stops. And again, I've arrived at that by pure guesstimation, right? You could get a light meter, you could light meter this, you could be done, but a light meter could cost you seven or 800 bucks. If you're on a budget and you just wanna learn lighting, you don't have to have a light meter to do studio lighting. You could just guess and get to your proper exposure. So here, great. So now the fill light is looking pretty good. I raised that up two stops. 
And theoretically, when I turn on this main light and the two blend together, we should be in business. So let's turn on our main light, test them out. Again, I haven't changed the settings at all. We're gonna take a photo. Looks pretty good. We're seeing a nice blend between the main light and the uh, fill light. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and start shooting and try to get some uh, good poses and good expressions. So everyone, that is how I dial in my settings when I'm shooting off camera flash in the studio. Hope you guys found this useful. If you're here watching this right now, make sure that you give Emily a uh, follow on Instagram. We'll put that in the description below. And any questions that you guys have, please leave them in the comment section. I do read them and I do try to reply back. And if the question is really good, then I may end up doing a follow-up video answering those questions in a future um, episode of The Breakdown. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to Adorama TV while you're here. And also check out the Adorama Learning Center because they have a lot more content there for you to dig through. Thank you so much again for watching The Breakdown and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye everybody.